Put it together for a guy I was seeing him on MSNBC this week. Wow, he's there all over you like crazy. I mean, it's uh, unreal what they're doing with Michael Shore these days. He's forgotten more about politics than most of us will ever know. He's covered the Trump rallies. He covered the Iowa caucus, and now he's uh, on to the New Hampshire primary. How about it for Michael Shore, everyone? Michael, thank you for taking a few minutes. I know we have short time with you because you have uh, other media obligations. As you're the darling at the dance now, my friend. Well, I would, uh, I would love to be that. I uh, always I was until they saw me dance, by the way. I got <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, Michael, wonder what's happening on the GOP side. I see Elise Stefanik, we were talking about it in the last hour, circling, and clearly she pretty much carries Trump water no matter what the water involves. Uh, she's the likely VP candidate for him. Yeah, I, it's it's certainly too early to tell. She's a name in the conversation. Um, I, I would, you know, a lot of it's going to have to do with what you know. His official residence is Florida, uh, so if it, it remains that, then he's able to put a New Yorker on his ticket, which you wouldn't be able to do with a Floridian. You have to be from different states. Uh, I think that Christy Nome is someone that um, I still think would be the most likely, um, if, if I were to put a bet on it, to be his running mate. People are talking about Tucker Carlson as well, which is kind of a wild card. But I, my guess would be uh, that those are three names that will be in the hat. And, and, and then it also becomes, you know, you start seeing how he's doing and what's going on, how many people People want to attach themselves to him. Uh, They realize also a lot of Republicans, there are only four years left uh, at the very worst of Donald Trump in terms of being president without a constitutional change. And and I think that they some are going to just want to distance themselves from that and and sort of suffer through it and then come out on the other side. But those are three names that obviously are being talked about. The politics of what's just happened in keeping the government open, I think they're fascinating Maybe you can explain, uh, so because I know it is sort of X's and O's, but yeah. this Mike Johnson may go the way of Kevin McCarthy because he had to keep the government open uh, as something that I think he felt was good for the GOP, even though it may not be good for Donald Trump. I mean, Trump would love to see, you know, the country yeah. on its side. Right, go ahead. Kind of shocking are some of the people that split from Mike Johnson in those votes. I mean, you 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 see people who have been kind of on his side for a long time, um, leaders of uh, you know chairman of committee and and leaders in the House who've been on his side for a long time, and they are leaving. So I mean, you're talking about um, Roger Williams, who's the head of uh, small business, Mark Green, Homeland Security, Mike Gallagher, the, the he was on the, the China Select Committee. These are big names. And they're big conservative names. Stefanik went against him. Jody Arrington, the budget chair. I mean, these are real um, dyed in the wool conservatives going against a speaker, and that doesn't bode well for him. There's still a lot of time. I mean, what it does is it buys Johnson time to fight hard on other issues, which is important as well. Uh, so, so not only does it extend, extend um, you know, funding the government uh, temporarily, but it also allows Mike Johnson to be speaker on other issues. And I would imagine he's going to get a lot of those people back. The, the tough part for Republicans on the Hill right now is, is Donald Trump and immigration, because Donald Trump still holds sway as the leader of the party over what senators and, and House members do on the Republican inside in in Washington. And, you know, as badly as the Democrats realize they need to do something on immigration, the Republicans don't want Joe Biden to have any credit for doing anything on immigration, even though they say that they want something done on immigration. But if Biden gets any of the credit, it somehow neutralizes a little bit of what is a very good message for Republicans on the campaign trail. That just says it so well, you know, how continues to be the immigration and border issue, something that's used for political ends as opposed to really trying to find solutions or trying to even broker any kind of solution with the other side. So uh, speak for a moment, Michael, to the court cases that loom for Trump. Seems as though his general strategy of killing the clock, you know, just delay, 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 it's kind of working. And the new Stuff out of Georgia that they may actually that that trial may be delayed in the in overturning the election. Um, 
I, I, I wonder, Michael, might it really all work out for Trump that he's able to effectively delay things? So t- it's hard to-, to say. I mean, you know, uh, uh, American jurisprudence takes a long time and, and they don't run on the same schedule of, oh, there's an election in November. Of course, as a human, you can't put that out of your mind. But but this is the kind of case where he not running for office. It would be taking this long. He would be fighting. There would be delays. There would be motions. Then you have out of left field um, something that happened with Fonnie Willis and somebody who worked for her, uh, who she may have dated. And, uh, you know, there are questions that any defense would want to put forward about the prosecutor if that were the case. So these are all are, are all what I see to be normal um, issues. But that doesn't mean that, that, that some of these cases are not going to come up. It doesn't mean there's not an indictment ahead. It doesn't also mean that there isn't more to come down the pipe. So I, I, it's hard to say uh, what the effect is in terms of predictability. It is still a distraction. It still eats into his um, into his uh, time on the trail. It eats into his message. Uh, and it also takes people uh, people's attention in the Republican Party away from where they want to be. I mean, if people are not happy in either party about what this election is shaping up to be between the president and the former president. But but that's what, if that's what it is, they're going to have to find a way around it. And these indictments, I think, are going to matter to some uh, some Republicans, I, you know, I spoke to some when I was in Iowa last week, I was I was speaking to some Haley supporters who said to me that yeah, they're not going to go to Donald Trump after this. They're not sure what they're going to do. Some said they won't vote. But there are Republicans who are, don't want the court cases either. The New Hampshire primary, Michael, you've just come from Iowa, as you've said, and you really swim in the stream as a reporter and journalist talking to Trump loyalists and looking at things from sort of on the ground on a granular level and also the 30,000 foot view. Can you give us both from the standpoint now of New New Hampshire primary? Yeah, you know, and I think it's also important to talk to colleagues, right, or talk to peers um, uh, when you're there. Speak speak to other journalists and what they're seeing in different places. Iowa has 99 counties and you can't be in all of them. So you have people that are going to went to Vivek Ramaswamy events and talking to their vote, to his voters and what they were going to do. You learn also from from other journalists. I mean, I think that the the common wisdom here is that if there is going to be a stand made against Donald Trump, it's going to happen in New Hampshire. Uh, Nikki Haley is, if she's able to hang on, she keeps making mistakes, but they don't seem to be fatal because a lot of her support just comes from people who don't want Trump. So no matter what Haley says, uh, that is a slip up or a gaffe or maybe not a great answer. Uh, she's still not Donald Trump to them. And whether or not there's a strong enough voice in, in typically independent uh, New Hampshire, uh, then then th- th- we'll see that, right? She has the support of a very, very popular governor. Ron DeSantis has basically left. Uh, Chris Christie left and he had 12% in the last poll in New Hampshire. And those people, I would say by and large, almost you know hard, hard to be able to see any of them going to Trump. Uh, so I think she has a chance and then what's next? South Carolina, Nevada. I mean, these are states where in South Carolina, certainly she was the governor there. Uh, So this is where she could make her run. There's nothing to me that indicates that this is going to change the course of the election, but without it, um, you know, we won't know. And so I think if she does well there and and she is able to even, you know, get a a sizable win in New Hampshire, not just a win, then it's part of the the conversation. A part of the conversation because she then might get some money flow into her campaign as well? Absolutely. Money flow, endorsements, people in other states taking a good look, people who are voting, we're not necessarily either sure they're going to vote for Donald Trump or are voting for Donald Trump and they're they're not excited about it. Maybe they say, all right, maybe this is the best path forward is to go with somebody else. And look, her numbers show that she can beat the president. So why not go with her? I mean, again, this is everything falling into place for Nikki Haley, which it hasn't done yet. I mean, she she came in third in Iowa, not second. So um, we're, we're talking about a big hypothetical, but that would be the, the best case scenario for, for Ambassador Haley right now. And just because we're talking about her, and you mentioned South Carolina, she's behind in her home state. Um, yeah. Is there a, an outcome there, assuming that the polls reflect the general flow of votes, that would leave her losing to Trump, but oddly in a favorable position? Uh, no, I don't think you lose your home state 
and are in a favorable position. I mean, if you even come in close is not what you want, right? I mean, I just don't think there's anything that looks good about losing your home state in a primary. And I can't, I mean, I know it's happened, uh, but to top line elected officials, whether it be a senator or a governor, it's very hard. People have won statewide and then lose in a primary. Uh, I just don't see how you can put, uh, put a good face on that at all. And finally, Michael Shore, the situation with Biden, this administration, they've handled, I think, fairly deftly a lot of very tough stuff. You can start with COVID and, you know, go from there to infrastructure bill and all of these uh, yeah. in this highly politicized environment. But now you add to this some legit international unrest, to put it politely, um, yeah. with the Middle East teetering on some level you know, and the Houthis involved in, in some of that teeter. I wonder if you can give me some framework as to how to evaluate that politically I'm talking about for Joe Biden. Right. I mean, this doesn't seem um, uh, other than sending money overseas, which people don't like. Uh, this doesn't seem like a foreign policy election for people who don't like the president. Uh, they're going to point to the exit in Afghanistan. You'll see ads about that. Certainly in the fall, they're going to talk, talk about how, you know, I speak to voters who are saying that they blame Biden for Ukraine and Israel. Right. That this would never have happened on Trump's watch. It's absurd to say that because we don't know. But that Joe Biden had anything to do with Vladimir Putin entering Ukraine and that Hamas was invited in by Biden in some way is very, very distant from the truth. That said, these people do believe it. So on foreign policy, they think that Trump was a better foreign policy president, that he lifted our standing in the world, which, you know, I, both anecdotally and in conversation, we know not to be the case. So I I think that Biden is going to, and we've talked about it, you and I, for a while, Kim, as well, that the money is going to be spent, right? And when the money is spent, defining that record is going to be important. I think the money is going to start being spent after New Hampshire. I really do. I think you're going to start seeing a lot of money spent very soon. I was watching this morning because I knew you were coming on some of your videos that you do from the Iowa rally, I guess, most recently yeah. with Trump supporters. And there are a whole bunch of things like, of the sort that you just referenced. And, and, you know, that is to say, if Trump had been president, the, you know, right. Putin never would have gone into Ukraine, et cetera. But the one that really jumped out at me, and you're really good at like, you, as you say, you know, you you like these people on some level and person to person, I mean, much of the time, but you also just, you know, can't understand there's a wall of, you know, the logic wall is, is there. Anyway, yeah. the one that jumped out at me this morning was that COVID was released deliberately by the U.S. government right. to control the people. And I'm thinking, yeah. that was released by the U.S. government that Trump was in charge of? To control, you know, I mean, it's it was. There such you go. But they don't. They think it's there's a deep state that does these things to I see. Trump. That that's even bigger than Trump. Uh, they call it the pandemic. That segment of the people I speak to, the pandemic, not the pandemic, and um, it's astonishing. They'll they'll they believe a lot of things that aren't true, which is, you know, which is why I ask them very often if they're in a cult, and I I ask it very seriously. Do they feel like this is cult like? Not if they're in a cult. Uh, because that's those are the sorts of things that you you find a guru or a master or a leader that you follow and everything that that person says you buy into. And that seems to be what's happening here. And there's not a great deal of information seeking or getting it from the people that they want to. There's one man I interviewed. This wasn't about Trump. It was about he said something about George Floyd. And he said, you know, George, they, that cop didn't have the knee on his neck. And I said to the guy, I said, did you see the video? He said, no. <laughs> yeah. That to me was one of the most interesting interactions I've had doing these because it, it really is emblematic of they just have to hear it. They don't have to see it. And if somebody that they like is saying it uh, or if it fulfills a narrative that exists in their head. I mean, he, he went on to say, look, Republicans are peaceful. They wouldn't have done uh, what happened on January 6th. It had to have been Democrats because look at what happened in the Democratic cities. You know, it's. Yeah. It's they, they, they find things that, that fill that uh, belief system. And I think that's exactly right. They find things. I mean, and I've really seen it. It's just so excruciatingly obvious as I watch your videos. So congratulations on I, I'm sure, you know, 
in a way, you know, you're, you're this journalist who's, you know, uh, involved with uh, at so, so many other levels. And so to deal with these people who are just attending a rally might be, you know, a little it's bit an of a odd, It's an odd body, an odd yeah. and unexpected <laughs> body of work. But it, right. But uh, that it's, said, it's, it's yeah. insanely popular. You know, the, yeah. I don't know if you've noticed the numbers on these millions of people watch these videos. Yeah, so uh, crazy. And it's enlightening. And Howard, Sir, Howard Stern said my name on the air today, which is really oh, the other So day. you've got that. Very nice. Well, I know, as I said, you're getting to be the media darling. You're the next one who uh will graduate out of the mark thompson show uh network to uh to a bigger network uh i'll let you go to your this is always home i promise uh thanks pal you're the greatest uh how about it for michael shore thanks michael thanks guys uh, the mark thompson show hi it's mark and i thought that was great hit the notification bell you'll know whenever there's a new video being dropped and please subscribe to our channel to help us save the universe